All right. Hey, you guys got GDP down now and everything's cool. Um, hey, I still got it. Hey, huh, huh, huh? Hey, it's the nominal GDP dance. Huh? What do we do for the real one? Oh, gosh. I'm looking at the screen. I screwed that up. Hold the price is constant so we can get the changing quantities for real GDP. All right. A um, couple things we need to talk about is price index. Now, we've looked at actually a few things where we had graphing the gaps. Um, you got a graphing gaps worksheet. When we did economic growth, we learned a model where we had the long-run aggregate supply curve, the vertical long-run aggregate supply curve at our potential GDP. And we just had that curve on there, but I told you guys later we would be uh, figuring out uh, and putting in there aggregate demand and the short-run aggregate supply. Because the intersection of those two curves tells us where our economy is operating, what the price level is, and what the GDP actually is. And then we can compare that to the potential GDP. But the one thing we really got to understand before we can jump into that is what, what is price level? Remember, price level is a change in the overall price level. It's the cost of living overall. It's not just a single good going up in price. Sometimes people say, hey, the price of bananas is going up. Whoa, this inflation is killing me. That's not inflation. That's the price of bananas going up. That's the official term. The price of bananas going up, that's the price of bananas going up. Now, that can contribute to inflation, but that is not itself inflation. Inflation is an increase in the overall price level. So how do we get that? Well, there's a couple of different ways. In fact, if you remember... Nominal GDP and real GDP. We were just looking at that, right? Hey, nominal GDP, price and quantity are both moving. But with the real GDP, we hold the price is constant, so just quantity is moving. So what that means is effectively we can do a little bit of a mathematical trick. It's an approximation here um, because really these is a bunch of vectors that we're dealing with. We don't want to get into that linear algebra on this one. But what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to get nominal GDP... Divide it by the real GDP and then times it by 100. Okay? So nominal GDP, where the prices and the quantities are both changing. Real GDP, where just the quantities changing. So effectively, the changing quantities cancel each other out. So what we're left with is changing prices for the whole economy. And so that's kind of the little trick that we can do to try to figure out what we know as the GDP deflator. That's what this is, the GDP deflator. Now, we times it by 100. It's an index. We're not times it by 100 because it's a percentage. This is not a percentage. Don't put percentage sign after this. This is the GDP deflator. We times it by 100, and it gives us the price index. When we figure out percentage, that's when we're seeing how much it changes, what percent change there is from year to year. So that's GDP deflator. Pretty straightforward stuff. I don't think I need to talk about that anymore. But the other one is CPI because we have a problem. We have a problem with the GDP deflator as a measure of the overall price level. There's a lot of stuff in the GDP deflator that consumers don't buy. Corrugated sheet metal. When's the last time any of you went out and bought some corrugated sheet metal? Okay, don't tell me, Gantz. You went out and bought some last week? All right, all right. Keep it to yourself. The average U.S. citizen didn't go out and buy corrugated sheet metal last week. That's something that we usually see producers buy. Okay, These are things. Now, the corrugated sheet metal, though, it might be an intermediate good, so not even be counted. But if we see that there's products in there that are investment goods, that businesses purchased, but the average consumer didn't, that doesn't change the cost of living for the average consumer. So what we've come up with is a different way to measure standard uh, the cost of living. So we take a survey, figure out what the average consumer consumes in a given year or a given time period. Basically a basket of goods, a basket of goods and services. What are the things that the average person consumes? Now, when we get that basket, then we go out and we collect the prices. We get all the prices of all those goods and figure out how much does it cost to buy that basket today. And then the next year we figure out how much it costs to buy that basket. Keeping track of how much that particular basket of goods costs 
from year to year, then we can calculate from that basket value the CPI. Now remember that basket value is changing and what we want to do to kind of standardize that is we want to compare it to something. And so what we do is we take the basket value of the current year, so whichever year we're looking at, we get the basket value from that year and divide it by the basket value of a base year. So that basket value of the current year divided by the basket value of a base year times it by 100. This too is an index, CPI, Consumer Price Index. So it's not a percentage. When we calculate the CPI though, just like with GDP deflator, we can calculate the rate of inflation. So there's the rate of inflation. It's the percentage change in the price index. Remember, percentage change, that's new minus old divided by old. And so what that means is to the degree that GDP deflator and CPI measure the price level differently, they will also give us different values for the, for the rate of inflation. There's a lot of times some debate over how much inflation there really is. Are either of these perfect numbers? No. In fact, as you look through the worksheet, you're going to figure out some things that cause CPI to rise, but GDP deflator doesn't, or vice versa. So that's an important kind of thing to, to keep in mind is that really inflation is unique to every individual. Because we're using CPI, figuring out what the average consumer consumes, but not everybody's average, right? Not everybody's average, okay? Take Brent. Brent's not average, of course not, okay? But, hey, that's all right. Me, I'm not average either, okay? Say bananas. Price of bananas goes up. Some people are saying, oh, that's causing inflation. They might be experiencing inflation if bananas are a large part of the basket of goods and services that they consume. Me, I hate bananas. I lived in Hawaii, but I still hate bananas. And you know what? If the price of bananas goes up, I experience no inflation. So really, we could construct a consumer price index for every individual person. But we're trying to figure out what's going on for the whole country. And that's why we go ahead and use the average consumer to figure out that basket, what's in that basket of goods. So when you think CPI, think, ah, basket of goods, the average consumer's basket of goods. Okay, GDP deflator, CPI, calculate the inflation rate. So price level, when you see it on the graph, aggregate demand and aggregate supply, that price level that you're going to see, that could be measured in CPI or it could be measured in GDP deflator. Um, so there's some different alternatives, but we just want to recognize that generally as the overall price level, not the price of any particular good. All right. Good luck with the rest of your studies.